Hey guys, I've been wanting to make this video for a long time, but I also wasn't sure if this topic would be a good one to talk about as my first video back after a long hiatus. What's wrong? Too busy formatting files? I mean, kind of, but I also feel like I've been having trouble forming cogent thoughts about this topic, and sometimes I just end up sounding off-putting. And I was thinking, Maybe I should do a video about a topic that's a little less heated. Maybe something like spatial statistics? <laughs> Boring. But then yesterday, I saw this on my feed. And all I could think was, it's beginning. So let's get into it. Here are my hot takes on why I think using AI to help you write academic papers is a bad idea. For those of you watching who don't write science papers, here's the deal. If you're a research scientist of any type, or if you've gone to grad school for a STEM degree, you'll know that writing and publishing peer-reviewed journal articles and writing winning proposals are pretty much the benchmarks for how successful you are as a scientist. But most scientists that I've met don't exactly love writing. Some even view it as a chore that gets in the way of doing real science. Unless you've been living under a rock for the past year, you'll know that AI language models like ChatGPT are becoming ubiquitous, with several news stories recently coming out about how teachers are worried that students are going to use AI to write essays for them instead of doing the work themselves. But this doesn't just apply to high schoolers. That's right, scientists are using it too. And unlike high school teachers, for the most part, academic publishers like Science and IEEE are okay with it. As long as you say you used AI to write certain sections of your paper, you can go for it. A lot of people are up in arms about this because they point out the numerous examples of AI getting it wrong. AI is pretty bad at using citations properly, and it often gets fundamental scientific concepts wrong. Personally though, I'm not too worried about this. Give it a month, it's gonna learn to stop making those mistakes. My problem with using AI in academic writing stems from one of the pro-AI arguments which is the argument that AI will be a boon to scientific progress because it will free up researchers from having to write these annoying sections of their papers, allowing them to focus on new, innovative science. Oh, is that why you haven't won a Nobel Prize yet? You're too busy writing your intro section? And that's a lovely idea, and I hope it really happens. But here's why I think it won't. Right now, what would you say is an impressive number of papers? 50? 100? It certainly depends on the field. If AI makes it easier and faster to publish papers, do you think that goalpost is gonna stay the same? That number is going to double or triple, and this will further incentivize adding incremental science to the already mountainous volume of publications that are out there because scientists feel pressure to keep chasing that publication count. Are you surprised that academic publishers are allowing AI to help write papers? If papers are faster to write, they'll be faster to publish, which makes those companies even more money. You don't have to know calculus to follow that logic. Even if you were right, that would be one plus one plus two plus one, not one plus two plus one plus one. Okay, fine. One plus two plus one. Shut up! Listen, guys. Writing is communication, and communication is the single most important thing that we do. I don't care if you have an idea that's going to revolutionize the planet. If you can't communicate it, no one's going to hear it. But the ability to communicate is not really a skill that scientists are specifically trained on. And at least when I went to grad school, there weren't classes specifically about scientific communication or how to write a paper or how to write a winning proposal. As she was saying this, she paused to reflect on the fact that she was in grad school a long time ago now. We spend a lot of time learning how to make scatter plots and very little time practicing communicating. So it's no surprise that a lot of us find writing hard. But we also shouldn't be shocked when people would rather believe flat earth theories than listen to us drone on about the complexities of climate change. Riddle me this, folks. If you start relying on AI to help you explain your science, do you think you'll become a better communicator? But I think that AI helps me understand all the different ways to explain a concept. I learn by using AI, and maybe that's true for some of you. For now. And for those of you who might be non-native English speakers who are using AI to help you better translate a concept, I'm not talking about you. 
I think using AI as a tool in that context is awesome because your job is not to be an English translator and it really sucks that we make everyone publish in English. But let me ask you this. How many of you use directions from Google Maps on your phone to help you understand how to read maps better in general? Has our sense of direction gotten better with Google Maps? Or do we blindly trust it? Maybe it's a shortcut, Dwight. It said go to the right. It can't mean that. There's well, a lake there. I think it knows where it is going. This is the the lake. machine knows. This is the lake. Stop yelling at me. No, it's not there. My concern is that we are pretty quickly going to go from using AI as a tool to help us better explain a sentence or two to using it as a crutch to write entire sections of text that we're too busy to write. And if AI becomes a crutch, we will become worse communicators overall. And this will show when you actually have to talk to scientists at conferences or to the general public when you can't rely on AI to speak for you. Here's an idea. If you're truly just using AI to help you save time writing a section of a paper that you think nobody reads anyway, the reviewers obviously didn't read this one, don't include that section. Okay, but journals require bland intro sections to be in the paper. Do you know why more people don't read papers? Because they're boring, because they're formulaic, because we're required to write in this bizarre, formal, third-person format that removes the most important thing from the paper, you. It didn't used to be this way, and it doesn't have to be now. So before you jump to using AI to help you write your paper, ask yourself, am I using it as a tool or as a crutch? Am I helping to perpetuate the broken publishing system we find ourselves in? Write a haiku in lieu of your introduction. Yeah. Put your entire method section in the format of a graphic novel. Do something that breaks yeah. the mold. Publishing paper after boring paper is not the only way to communicate your science, and it is far from the best way. So instead of using AI to lean further into this broken system, let's change it. Man, you really had some opinions there. Oh my god, I know. It made me really uncomfortable. I'm still sweating.